Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is... Spatial Report. Welcome to the Esri Canada podcast that connects our user community with the latest and coolest trends in the world of ArcGIS. On today's show... We will learn how utilities use ArcGIS to model, analyze, and work with their network data. Then our newest GeoGeek drops by to give you some tips on when and how to upgrade your ArcGIS enterprise. And then we go inside the ArcGIS boxing ring for another knockout edition of M vs. M. It's February, it's the month of love, so let's share some GIS love, shall we? Maggie Sampson, welcome back to the February edition of the podcast. How are you? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? You know, just rocking along because it is Valentine's month. It is the time for love. So why don't we share some GIS love by talking about what's making us mappy this month. So Maggie, why don't you get us uh, off and running here? What is making you mappy today? So many things are always making me mappy, Mark. But I think this month I have to share some love for ArcGIS Instant Apps, one of your personal faves. I I love Instant Apps. (laughs) Do tell. Well, there's an app that I've been using lately that's just been making me feel great. It's the Manager application. It's pretty new. It's in beta, but it's been really handy for me as someone who uses a lot of ArcGIS solutions, because if anyone's familiar with solutions, there's a nice application that's often involved, which is the Crowdsource Manager. So when you go out, you collect data, it goes into ArcGIS online, and then you can go and have your you know, office staff validate the answers that have been submitted or validate the records that have been collected. And it's a really handy tool for editing content in ArcGIS Online. But sadly, it's pretty old. It's using that API for JavaScript 3.x, that older version, just like Web App Builder. And I don't know what the future is going to be for the Crowdsource Manager. Not a fear anymore. We have the ArcGIS Instant App Manager, which works in basically the same way. A really great tool where it's like a table that shows all the data that's been collected and you can edit the data in the table. You can access the map and fill out a pop-up like a form. Just a really easy way to coordinate group editing on content that's collected in ArcGIS Online. And I've been loving it so far. That is amazing because I actually use that crowdsource reporter in the past a lot. So it's great Mm -hmm. that we have an instant app that does the equivalent. This is great news. I know. It's so exciting. I was getting nervous. I love the solutions, but... It's a little bit of an older application and, you know, what's going to happen, but no, no fear anymore. I've got the manager from Instant Apps team and it's been working fantastic. But what about you, Mark? Anything making you mappy this month? Oh my goodness. All right. So there is a brand new website that's out there that is really peaking my eyes. It's called maps.com. So this Ooh. is a new Esri website that allows our creators to be able to share their content. So it's a great content platform to be able to highlight beautiful maps and help our users better understand the world and why maps are important. So if you, you have to check out this website, the maps are absolutely gorgeous. They're beautiful, but I do have a couple of favorites. So one is uh, how global inflation changed the world since 1970. And there's a little video that kind of shows how um, inflation has really impacted uh, different countries and really highlights those uh, those countries that uh, really had high inflation over the last few years. Another one that's really cool that I really love is the um, is cross section of an active volcano. So this is the the Mauna Loa of a uh, volcano on, on the Big Island of Hawaii. So there's a great animation to be able to pan and zoom around, and there's different uh, different data types that you can examine um, on on this 3D scene. So it's really cool. Um, so what I really love about maps.com, it really highlights, you know, amazing cartography. It's got great animation. It really highlights how maps can tell powerful stories. So if you haven't had a chance, please check out maps.com. And the best part is you can even submit your own content if you want to. So if you've got a really cool map, you want to be able to share it with the world, uh, there is a submit form that you can uh, access through maps.com. So give it a try and, and really ooh and ah at some of the beautiful cartography and maps that are on that particular website. Wow, that sounds really cool. I got to check it out. Those two maps sound a little spooky for me. Maybe I'll have to find something <laughs> a little a little less scary to look at. But I'm really excited to see what there is on maps.com. Thanks for sharing that, Mark. Absolutely. All right. So coming up next, we're going to go inside the arc and introduce you to the interesting world of ArcGIS and managing utility networks. We have this saying in GIS that everything is somewhere. This definitely applies to the utilities industry. 
Location intelligence is essential for communications, water, electric, and gas utilities to manage complex networks that aim to maximize efficiency and minimize disruptions. To help us understand how utilities of all sizes and types can fully leverage ArcGIS, we are joined by our friend and pal, Jenny Fong. She is the team lead for the Utilities Technical Solutions at Esri Canada, and she joined us from Richmond Hill today. Hi, Jenny. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Thanks. Nice to see you too as well. We're really excited to have you here with us today, and we really need to get started with sort of the most basic question for us noobs out there. Could you tell us what is the ArcGIS Utility Network? Yeah, so the ArcGIS Utility Network is the newest network management uh, uh, framework that Esri has created to support the various utility and telecom customers that we have. It actually provides utility companies uh, with the ability to model, edit, and analyze the complex networks uh, in a very highly responsive way, all while being able to access the data and the capabilities across that of the, our entire Esri ecosystem. So now the utility network actually uses a RESTful architecture. Um, this has changed from what we used to have, which was a more database-centric solution to now a more web-centric solution. Uh, and this means that you're able to interact uh, with it as well as utilize the functionalities through a feature service itself. And this allows uh, users to access the various functions like running traces, creating schematic diagrams, uh, which we call network diagrams inside of the utility network. Um, there's also the version management side of things, uh, which we call branch versioning, as well as the, the validation services themselves. So all of these can be accessed through that REST endpoint and therefore be accessed via your desktop application like ArcGIS Pro um, and on field applications like field maps or even in uh, web browser applications like Experience Builder. Wow, so there's a lot going on there and I'm sure there's a lot of people that were really interested in learning more about utility networks, but this might not necessarily be for, be for everyone. So who would use the utility network? Yeah, so essentially any utility customer dealing with electric, gas, water, wastewater, storm, or telecommunication systems, they would all be very good candidates for the utility network. And these customers that I've been talking to um, usually need to have that network connectivity and requires tracing analytics capabilities along with other functionality that the utility network actually provides. So a lot of these customers already use our legacy uh, network management solution called the geometric network and they should really be thinking about uh, the utility network to be able to continue with the connectivity functionality that they're already using in the legacy system itself. So for people who are looking to start using the utility network or maybe move into that direction what is required for them to actually get it up and running? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, customers that I've been talking to, um, you know, understand that the utility network is kind of a, a new architecture. It's that, like I mentioned, that RESTful architecture. Um, and so it does require a little bit more on the back end as well. And so we do require a supported version of ArcGIS Enterprise as well as an enterprise geo database. Um, and then in order to manage and maintain and deploy your utility network, you do also need to utilize ArcGIS Pro. Um, from there, uh, in terms of licensing, you'll still need to have your same Esri user type licenses. Um, and then you will also need to have the ArcGIS advanced editor um, editing user type extension to utilize all the functionality uh, that comes along with the utility network. Mm, that's really interesting. So I'm wondering if you're a utility client right now and you need see this new framework in front of you, uh, when is a good time for these uh, utility clients to be able to make the move to the utility network? Yeah, so I get this question a lot from customers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, every single person I talk to, my answer is always like today. You need to start planning for this today and start moving towards the new functionality and the new technology. Um, you know, the latest version of ArcMap and as well as the legacy network management solution that we have, the geometric network, is already moving into mature support as of March of this year. So, you know, as we know, mature support means no more software updates, no more patches, 
or either, um, you know, certifications on new environments. So really, my answer to them is start now planning for that so that when you're ready to move, uh, you'll still be supported under the uh, product lifecycle as well. Yeah, it definitely seems like now is the time to go. And I think you covered it a little bit, but, you know, maybe you could help us understand even more. Why is it important for utility clients? Why should they be making this move? Yeah, so aside from, you know, ArcMap being in mature support um, and the legacy uh, network management system kind of coming out of support as uh, like out of uh, into mature support, you know, one big thing is that people forget that you know, the geometric network is something that was created 20 years ago, right? Mm. Um, so if you think about that, 20 year, years ago, we never had cell phones, we didn't have tablets, right? The requirements of 20 years ago, the geometric network worked fine for what that uh, the utility clients were looking to do. But now they're looking to be able to access the data faster, being able to access it anywhere and on any device. Um, and then even being able to do things like provide tracing functionality to, let's say, your field crew or your field staff so that they can do emergency management operations or even providing, you know, the current state of the system to, let's say, your engineering department so that they can do future planning projects as well. All of this can be achieved through the utility network and that services based architecture. And so that's why um, I believe clients should be moving to it uh, sooner rather than later. Right. So there's obviously some urgency in some point because we know that there is a, a time uh, limit uh, that's coming up. So how do clients get started on this journey towards the utility network? Yeah, so another great question that I get from clients as well, and we do understand that there is a lot of different things to think about when moving and transitioning to the utility network. And so that's why we have a whole bunch of different training courses that are available. We have services that are available by Esri Canada, as well as, you know, being able to just just playing with the software, right? Creating that kind of playground for you to actually use the, the new system uh, to understand it and, and the functionality it, it provides. And so what we have is that we've provided uh, to clients uh, some various ArcGIS solutions templates that people can actually start to deploy and look at today. Um, these templates are available across the different types of utility domains that I was talking about. So we have some for electric, gas, water, wastewater, storm, as well as telecommunications. Um, and we basically provide two different flavors. Uh, the first one is a full utility network solution, which we call the uh, network uh, utility network foundation. Uh, essentially, if you go, let's say, to the electric group inside of the uh, solutions templates, it'll be called electric utility network foundation. If you go to the water one, it'll call, be called uh, water utility network foundation. Uh, foundation. And this foundation and this template actually provides you with first off sample data that you can start to play with. It provides you with a full on file geo database that you can start using today with ArcGIS Pro. And then it also has information and steps in there in terms of how you can deploy it into um, at your enterprise environment, as well as running various kinds of um, various kinds of functionality like your tracing, as well as, um, you know, doing edits on the system as well. The other template that we have for customers is, you know, those customers who want to start thinking about moving towards the new technology, but not quite ready to move to the utility network. Uh, for these clients, we have something called the distribution data management solution. And essentially, this provides you a model that was built directly off of the utility network. So you get a model that's similar to the utility network, but it allows customers to either start collecting their, their uh, asset data or continue to collect their asset information so that when they are ready to move to the utility network, they will have a complete and uh, complete network information ready to go. Because um, as we know in GIS, you know, data is king here, right? So we want to make sure that the data is um, complete and ready to go. So it also pr provides you with some pre-created applications uh, at, like dashboards as well as field applications to help you start collecting that data quicker and ready to uh, and kind of get you ready to go from there. Um, and 
Before, as I mentioned, we have lots of training courses that are available. Uh, not only do we have instructor led um, courses, but we also have a lot of self paced training courses that can actually help you on your way as well. Wow, you've shared a lot of resources to help people get started. So there's definitely a wealth of knowledge out there, which is fantastic. Is there anywhere that people should go to look specifically for more information? Yeah, absolutely. So the easiest place to go to is our website, right? You can enter into a browser esri.ca slash UN, and you'll be able to find a whole bunch more information about the utility network. But there's loads of webinars, YouTube videos, uh, blog posts and stuff like that that are available on the utility network topic as well as the implementations and so on. Um, and one uh, one thing that I wanted to announce on this to make sure that everyone was aware is that on Wednesday, March the 20th, we are actually going to be having and hosting a webinar um, that will be part of our water series um, to talk about the rapidly changing requirements that utilities actually have and how we can actually move them towards that digital transformation with the utility network. So even though uh, this this webinar is kind of geared towards the wa water customers, you know, the content and the concepts within them are applicable to across the board to all of the different types of utilities that we have as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that and uh, please, please register for that as well. Definitely, yeah. And that's something I'm really interested in now because I, I feel like I know utility networks a little bit better. So, Jenny, we really appreciate you uh, giving us uh, this grand overview about what the utility network is all about. Uh, but we'd like to wrap things up by asking you to sort of summarize uh, everything that we learned today with three takeaways our audience should know. So what are those sure. three takeaways? Sure. So, I mean, obviously, there's quite a lot of stuff about the utility network, network but like in terms of the three takeaways from today, I would say that the utility network, the first one is the utility network is the path forward for our electric, gas, water, wastewater, sewer, and telecommunication customers who are looking to have a complex and connected model um, to be used as their network management system. Um, next is you got to start planning now. That transition to the utility network should start now and um, you know ensure that when the the legacy geometric network is deprecated that you have something to go to as well as kind of future proofing yourself. Um, and then the last thing is that there's plenty of information everywhere. Like I mentioned, there are these these fantastic uh, podcasts that Maggie and Mark are making <laughs> as well as like, you know, going on to the Esri channels for on on YouTube um, blog posts. Um, the ArcGIS solutions templates, and then even lastly, you know, contacting Esri Canada representatives themselves to have that chat with customers and to have a further conversation about what they would be looking forward to uh, in the future. Well, thanks so much for all that information, Jenny. There's definitely a lot of resources out there. I'm looking forward to your webinar. I'll be watching and hopefully other people will too, because it, like you said, the time is now for the utility network. So Thank you so much for being here and hopefully we'll be able to speak to you on the podcast again in the future. Sounds good. Thank you. That was Jenny Fong, the team lead for Utility Technical Solutions Group at Esri Canada. And coming up next, our ArcGIS Enterprise Geo Geek will tell us when to say when, at least when it comes to upgrading ArcGIS Enterprise. It's now time for the GeoGeeks, our regular segment where we bring on subject matter experts to tell us what's noteworthy in one of our core ArcGIS products. And today we are happy to introduce our newest GeoGeek, Justin Broussard, who's joining us to talk about all things ArcGIS Enterprise. Justin, welcome to our GeoGeek family. Hey. Woo, welcome, Justin. Thanks, guys. Glad to be a part of this family. A um, lot of, I, I love Enterprise myself, so I'm going to love diving into this stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Well, since this is your first podcast with us, we need to get the quick bio. So tell us a little yeah, bit about course. yourself and how you got to Ezra Canada. 
Yeah, so uh, my name is Justin Broussard. Um, I'm currently a technical solution specialist uh, with Esri Canada. So my journey's uh, been relatively short so far with Esri Canada. I've been here about a, a year and a half uh, to date. Um, I essentially started my journey in GIS at McMaster, believe it or not. I, I started studying in business and soon discovered GIS. And I was like, oh, this is definitely it. This is going to be my career path. So then I uh, ended up going to the Fleming uh, postgraduate program for application specialists afterwards. And then uh, here I am, I always, ever since I started using the Esri technology, I've kind of had a dream of working here. So dream come true. And now I'm here, I guess, right? Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. welcome. And definitely love someone who spent time in Hamilton, I'm a big Hamilton yeah. fan. Mark oh, likes yeah. to make fun of it, but it's a great place <laughs> to start your GIS journey. <laughs> well, since you're here, and I know we talked last last season, last year about mm -hmm. uh, update StartJS Enterprise. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more building on the fact we know there's new releases, but what about people who are trying to start using those? What is a good time for people who want to update to do that, to transition to ArcGIS, new versions of ArcGIS Enterprise? Yeah, so very good question. I mean, uh, that's that's really going to depend on various factors, right? And the main thing I like to start with is, is your organization ready for this, right? There's a lot of moving parts of it in, in ArcGIS Enterprise, and it's kind of one of those things that uh, if you're not really to... If you're not really ready to upgrade your deployment at that moment and ready for stuff to be down for a specific amount of time during the update, right? It's maybe not the best time for you. If you just want the added functionality, uh, sometimes there's some workarounds you can do, other times not, which is completely okay. And you might have to go through with that update if you need to, right? But uh, it's like I said, there's a lot of things you got to kind of consider. And one of the things I actually recommend a lot when you're when you're looking to upgrade in your deployment is to look at the retirement notice, right? So kind of note the version you're on and look at the future, uh, look at the future versions upcoming. And this is actually documentation in our ArcGIS uh, enterprise um, workspaces on our, on our website. And you can actually kind of see, okay, well, what version is safe for me to kind of go to and what versions uh, are going to maybe come up and be retiring in the shortcoming time, right? So try and avoid those and maybe plan your your upgrade around that, right? Right. Yeah. So you, you raised an interesting question about versions. So mm -hmm. I know you get this question a lot about what version should you go to? Should you just go to the latest um, I mean, reversion, we, what, what's sort of the best strategy for that? I, that's definitely an option, right? Again, it's something to consider. It's like I said, once you upgrade your enterprise deployment, you got to think about it. You're upgrading server, you're upgrading portal, you're upgrading your web adapters. There's maybe some new .NET frameworks that you're going to have to involve in the space of updating your actual uh, deployment, right? So um, there's various components to that, but it solely depends on what you're going to like and what your needs are out of ArcGIS Enterprise, right? So it's like I said, if you want the newest and greatest, you can obviously go to that newest version. That's completely okay, right? But you have to make sure that your organization's ready for that, right? You might not need all the newest content. So if you want something like ArcGIS Dashboards Classic, right? That's not available in versions 11.0 onwards, right? So if you still want that, you might have to stick behind in 10.9.1. But the thing that's nice about ArcGIS Enterprise is complete, it, it's consistently being kind of updated, right? And you'll have like all these new apps kind of integrate all the old applications in some shape or form, right? So there's stuff that's always kind of interchanging and replacing one another so that you can have that functionality still. So I do want to mention though, if you're on a version that's as old as 10.6.1 or before 10.7x, we'll say, okay, you're going to have to do two upgrades. You're going to have to do an interim upgrade to get to the versions between 10.7x and 10.9x, okay? And then you can upgrade to uh, version 11x. That's strictly if you want to upgrade to version 11x, obviously, right? So you can't, in other words, you can't really just do the jump from 10.6.1 or 10.5x, whatever, for example, straight to 11, right? If you're already in that range of the 10.7x, et cetera, to 10.9x, you can come in and make that update automatically. Otherwise, you're going to need two uh, update, so to speak. So, right, makes sense. Thanks yeah. for clarifying that. No uh, definitely, there's a lot of versions of enterprise, and if yeah. I'm looking to upgrade, I want to make sure that things are stable, things are working. Is there mm -hmm. a specific version I should be upgrading to to make sure things are stable? 
Yeah, process. 100%. So, I mean, there's no set version, right? I mean, typically you'll get your versions like 11.0, for example, 11.1, 11.2, 11.3, so on. 11.3 is not out yet, upcoming in the future, so stay updated for that. Um, but those versions with the singular decimal place afterwards are going to be your major updates, we'll call them, okay? And then after that, with another decimal place added, so if we have, uh, for example, 10.9.1, right? the the uh the nine one afterwards so the one afterwards is essentially just like security patches all that type of stuff right bug fixes uh all that type of stuff so if you want the major functionalities added in you could definitely go to the single decimal places right um and another thing i do want to mention if you're looking at kind of upgrading your uh, your development or production environments right it's important to remember that if you want to go to a stable not even a stable but like more of a um more of a more of a jump to an enterprise deployment that has like less beta functionality we'll call it right it's important to remember that the odd numbers are the ones that you want to go to so 11.3 coming up for example is going to be a pretty safe bet for that 11.1 right uh, the versions in between those have beta functionality and those kind of get like fixed up throughout time and then they get kind of solidified in those versions uh such as 11.3 coming up so Hmm, interesting. So think yeah. odd numbers as opposed to uh, doing anything else. <laughs> exactly. I like, I like that. All right. Now, I know a lot of our users front and center in their minds is ArcMap and sort of the deprecation of ArcMap yep. in the next uh, few years coming up here. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are using ArcMap, um, are you able to transition to enterprise 11.0 or later? Yep. So here's what I'm going to say about that. ArcGIS Pro has evolved over time to in fact, incorporates so much functionality from ArcMap, right? If not more at this point with the current versions that we're on. So the basic publishing and like administrative workflows that you would kind of get out of ArcMap in Enterprise before version 11, uh, you won't get that in version 11 onwards, right? So in other words, it's not really supported in version 11 onwards. Uh, we do highly suggest that you use ArcGIS Pro if you're looking to go into versions of ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0 onwards and kind of stick with that. Uh, and it, it's like I said, you don't really have to worry. Most of the functionality is going to kind of be there. And if not, I'm sure 99% of it will get added over time for the most part, right? Um, saying this, you could still use ArcMap right? You can keep ArcMap downloaded on your desktop application as a desktop application, for example, and use it. It's just you're not going to get that full functionality out of uh, enterprise workflows, right? So you're not going to be able to publish services anymore if you're on a newer version of enterprise, stuff like that, right? So. Absolutely. I think ArcMap, we've been singing its its songs of goodbye today. We're, yep. Time to move to the future. <laughs> yeah. Time to say goodbye to ArcMap and move to ArcGIS Pro. Uh, thanks so much for sharing this information about Enterprise with us, Justin. It's been great having you and we're excited to have you on for more episodes in the future. Yeah, no worries, guys. Thanks for having me. We'll catch you soon. <laughs> And that was Justin Broussard, our newest enterprise geo geek. He is officially a technical solution specialist here at Azure Canada and was calling in from Bolton, Ontario. Coming up next, it's time to face off against my evil GIS nemesis in a true head to head battle of M versus M. Are you ready for the most popular game in the world since Plinko? That's right, it's time for another special edition of M vs. M, where we truly battle mano a mano. And here to referee this quiz royale is our former Enterprise Geo Geek, Michelle Brake. Welcome back to the podcast, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I was like, you know what? They've traded me out for a new model. It's like Enterprise. We just move on. But it's nice <laughs> yeah. to be invited back. Bust it off. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And maybe before we get into the game, you can try to explain yourself a little bit. Why are you no longer a GeoGeek with us? Well, okay. I know you're like, you went to the store for milk. You didn't come back. What's going on? <laughs> it turns out that here at Esri Canada, we also have another podcast you may have heard about called Geographical Thinking that looks at stories, ideas, and conversations through the lens of GIS. Our wonderful co-worker, Quan Yu, had previously been hosting it, but due to some changes and her going on to some other positions within the company, we were looking for someone to take it over. I have stepped up to fill that position. We figured we'd share around the wealth of geo-geekness experience. <laughs> 
and you are sharing the wealth through our sister podcast. So that's amazing. Congratulations, Michelle. But don't worry, you're going to come back to our podcast once in a while, including on special occasions like this, because you have a game for us, correct? I do. And with it being February, Valentine's Day, the month of love, we're going to play a game of Can You Date It? And it, in this case, is GIS software. Oh, yay. So romantic. <laughs> I know. Everyone's favorite oh. game of, ooh, how old is this software? Oh, boo. Oh. I hate this game. Mark has the advantage here. That's right. Old people, <laughs> we got this. All right, this let's is, go. This is ageism, okay? <laughs> okay, well, then, Maggie, I'll let you decide who goes first. Uh, I'll let Mark go first. Okay. All right. So Mark, I need, war- are you I need ready? Warm up. <laughs> yes. Do you need to work on your button pressing skills, even though there's no buttons? I am ready to go. Let's uh, let's okay. fire away. Sight. So, to get us started, in what year was Arc Info first released? You have three options: 1980, 1982, or 1984. Man, that's a good question. So old. It's got to be the oldest one. I'm going to say 1980. Eh, It is 1982. (gasps) Wow, Wow. Mark, come on. You should know that. That's true. You were around. Yeah, yeah. I was just a teenager then. I'm sure you were loving using a lot of GIS at that time. Oh, oh, yeah. I always (laughs) was. Okay, so we're still zero for zero, but Maggie, your turn. In what year was the first version of Arc May They Rest in Peace? 8.0 8.0 released. 1995, 1997, or 1999? I didn't even know there was an 8 of map, so I'm just going to have to go with my beautiful birth year. Was it 95 was an option, right? That's, that's where I'm going. Me and map, same age. <laughs> Once again, no! it was 1999. I think it was like a Y2K <sighs> situation. Darn. Why Get is it, it called out? 8? What does that have to do with anything? Hey, I don't know. I didn't make the rules at that point. I was still just in elementary school. I'm sorry. Well, you guys make me sick. All right, continue. Okay, Mark, this is your turn. We'll mm-hmm. do something a little bit easier. Oh, I think God. it's easy, but this is my product area. In what year was ArcGIS Server first released? Oh, 2004, oh, 2005, or 2006? Oh. Four, five, or six. Yep. I'm going to go with 2006. It, it is 2004. Wow. Ugh, my heart. We're never going to get a point here, Mark. We're, yeah, we're doomed. This could be. <laughs> oh, my okay. gosh. We're both reading the outro today. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, sharing is caring. Um, at this point, Maggie, oh. you got it. You got this. I believe in you. In what year was ArcGIS Online first released? 2011. 2012 or 2013 the internet is only so old let's go with 2012 yes okay that's the same year the world ended remember big year, right? yeah. big year. hey and then we also had that release in 1999 for y2k maybe there's something <gasps> there's a pattern there's places. a trend end of world release okay <laughs> we're gonna give mark one more see if he can tie it up and if he can't the Maggie's our winner, guys. Oh, okay, Pressure's on, okay. Mark. Mark, yeah. this is it's a softball. You got softball. this. In what year was ArcGIS Pro first released? 2013, 2014, or 2015? Oh man. 2013, 14, or 15. ArcGIS Pro. I'm gonna say 14. It is 2015, oh, Mark. Thank God, God I couldn't answer chance. another one. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you the chance to come back and like maybe clutch it to keep the game going, but maybe. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I can't believe our Arc- Arc.js Online is older than ArcGIS Pro. I know. I was also surprised at first, but I was like, wait, you know, we had ArcMap. It was still going strong. Makes sense that online came first. And then we moved into the product that would work with it in the future. Nothing makes sense to me except the fact that I've won again. So thank you, Michelle. You're That's welcome. Great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Mark, I'm sorry. 
try yeah, better. Thanks next a lot. Time. Thanks a lot, Michelle. <laughs> go go to your own podcast. Leave us alone. <laughs> Banishment. Just what I was expecting again. Yes, I know. Lots of lots of anger and resentment. But we do appreciate you being here, Michelle. Thank you so much. That was Michelle Brake, our newest host of the Geographical Thinking Podcast. So make sure you listen and subscribe to her podcast. And now it's time for my outro. Here we go. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Spatial Report. Please check out our website at esri.ca slash spatial report to learn more about the topics we covered today. We also post videos of our interview segments on the Esri Canada YouTube channel. This podcast is brought to you by Esri Canada, a technology company that empowers people and organizations and podcast hosts by the science of where. Maggie, it's time to crawl back under the bed. I'll talk to you next month. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll be there. All right. Until then, happy mapping. Happy mapping.